Well, yep, it's back by popular demand, Phone Roulette. You'll hear that uh, in this episode. It is Liam here, and uh, yeah, fun episode tonight. I also bungled a booking, so you'll hear about that. And um, we play this song that we're obsessed with at the moment from these Irish nine-year-olds, like the drum and bass thing. You've seen it yet? Awesome. Yeah, you'll hear it in this. Enjoy. <laughs> Who's ready to have some fun? Ben, I am. I'm ready oh, for we're all fun. fun. Across Australia, this is Ben, Liam and Bell's Let's Drive! On Nova. Here we are again, and I don't know how I feel about it. Are we, are, we, are we really doing phone roulette again, Ben? We are doing phone roulette again, Liam. Last time we played this last week, uh, it landed on Belle. This was her reaction, if you missed it. Round and round she goes, where it stops, nobody knows. Ah! So we all pass each other our phones and we can send one risky text to one of the contacts. Um, But only one text will be sent because all our names are here on this wheel. Um, So I've got Belle's phone this evening. Uh, Ben, whose phone do you have? I've got your phone, Liam. Oh, dear. And I've got Ben's. (laughs) All right. We've gone through the contacts and we've crafted up a message. Who wants to go first? Um, Belle, I thought if the wheel lands on you... Mm -hmm that we could message Harry Cross. Oh, my ex. Ex, ex. <laughs> y- ex. Your ex. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, he just got married. That's good. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is good. Um, great timing. Because I was going to message from your phone. Here we go. I miss you so much. Breaking up with you was the worst mistake I've ever made. <laughs> Are you free this weekend? <laughs> and he's just got married. He just got married like Ooh. a few weeks ago. Oh. Home wrecker. <laughs> Imagine if you just split it up like within the month. He's like, oh, Belle, finally, the one I was waiting for. You know? <laughs> oh, God, I hope it lands on you. Uh. All right. Now, Liam, I've got your phone. I've written a message to Antimo, one of the country's biggest <laughs> entertainment reporters. Okay, Antimo, yes. Yep. 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 Uh, and I've said, hey, mate, got a big radio scoop for you. Mm-hmm. This will be front page stuff. But you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> what would you make up? <laughs> well, that would be up to Liam, wouldn't so, it? So, yeah, I, I, he calls me from the paper and then I have to sort of come up with some <laughs> some shit. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Okay, okay Ben, mm. I have chosen Jace Hawkins. Who <laughs> yeah. uh, we were doing Melbourne Breakfast last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we're doing this show mm-hmm. and Jace and Lauren are now doing Melbourne Breakfast. They mm-hmm. they have what we were doing. It says, hey, Jace, I managed to catch a few breaks this morning. I'm not sure if it was the long lunch yesterday, but you guys sounded a bit tired and long-winded. <laughs> I hope you managed to pick it up next week. Otherwise, maybe Nova made the wrong decision. <laughs> <laughs> That's just mean. <laughs> Wiggle your way out of that one. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, these all suck. Oh, okay, well, you can hear the drone. That means we are about to spin the wheel. Okay. All right, here we go. Spinning the wheel now. Yes! <laughs> yes! It's Bell's phone again! It's Bell's phone again! <laughs> the wheel knows! Because oh, <laughs> you were cocky! You even said it! You said you were cocky! Here we go, oh, Harry. Bell's ex. I miss no, you so because... much. Breaking up with you was the worst mistake I've ever made. Are you free this weekend? And he's just gotten married as well. Here we go. Send. Oh, <laughs> oh Bell, you home wrecker. <laughs> I didn't do anything yet. I haven't done anything. <laughs> what have oh, I No. That is going to be some. Uh, that's going to be an awkward dinner table conversation <laughs> when that one comes through, I reckon. Be hard, hard talking your way around that one. <laughs> I love phone roulette. It's the Don't best. You? I just wanted to land on Bell every week. <laughs> if we get a reply from that message, we'll be sure to let you know. It's late drive on Nova. God, I'm an idiot. I did something so dumb today. Um, ben and Bell, as you know, I'm spending Christmas and New Year's in Scotland this mm. year. Uh, some of our best friends have moved over there, so I'm really excited. Um, big holiday with my wife, and um, we're sort of just like planning the trip, and it sort of popped into my head today. 
wouldn't it be cool to see a gig overseas? You know how you know lots of people come to Australia, but Europe, you know, it's it's a bit more central. There's probably big artists playing all the time. I got to see uh, Alt J play in Spain. Yeah, there you go. Very cool. Um, so I was like, oh, like I'll see, I'll see what's on, see if there's anything that sort of fits into that little window that we're there. And I jumped on this website, and I couldn't believe my luck, couldn't believe my eyes, because in Edinburgh on December thirtieth, guess who's playing? The Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> One of the world's sickest bands. I'm like, are you for real? I just could, I couldn't believe it. So I've, I've called my wife and I'm like, you'll never guess what. Like when we're in Scotland, Chili Peppers are playing. And she's like, oh my God, oh my God, really, really? And I was like, yeah, yeah, And then I got on Facebook and was like messaging the friends. I'm like, should I just get tickets? Like, I'll just get the tickets and then you guys just transfer me. I'll just get it now. I'm like, just get it sorted. So I've like, I've jumped on like, and I was like, oh my God, there's still a few left. And like quickly like paid for the tickets. I'm like, oh my God. And I was like, this is actually like the deal of the century because they're only 30 pounds, which is like $60 Australian. Mm. And I was like, how have we gotten away with this? And I was, I was sort of like looking at it and I was like, man, it's like the theater is less than 2000 people. Like this is dream case scenario. And then I realised I just paid for six tickets to the Red Hot Chili Pipers. <laughs> you didn't. Who were Scotland's premier seven-piece Highland bagpiper band who do traditional pipe covers <laughs> of rock songs. <laughs> we're going to the Chili Pipers, baby! <laughs> I mean, you are dyslexic. I get that. I saw it and I was like, whoa! I, to be honest, I saw red hot shit and then I just was paying for tickets. You know what I mean? I'm like, get me there. Unpopular opinion. You've seen Chili Peppers live before. I have. This is kind of cooler. Yeah. You're it's in good. Scotland. Like, well, yeah, you're yeah. Go so see you a bought the tickets? No, I, I am going to the Chili Pipes now. I bought the tickets. I mean... That'll be good! I don't know what the resale value is like on them as well. You know what I mean? <laughs> Did you bungle the booking? 13, 20, 14. Maybe you wanted some flights to Australia, but you booked them to Austria instead. It happens, especially when things are very similarly named and it looks like a good deal and you just <laughs> want to jump on and get it. Uh, Rach in Melbourne, uh, this is your partner. He bungled the booking. Yeah, so he's done it a few times, but one of the worst that he's done, we did um, long distance for a while. I was living down here in Melbourne and he was living up on the Gold Coast. And I flew up to see him. He always leaves, leave, like, booking hotels to the last minute. And he's like, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Anyway, it was the Queen's birthday long weekend on the Gold Coast. Yeah. So everything was booked out. He managed to find this one hotel that had bookings, flew up, drove to the hotel, went to check in. The check-in office was closed, called them. He booked it for the following weekend. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks, mate. Yep, that's the last time you did the bookings. Uh, Tiana <laughs> in Brizzy, what happened to you? Um, my husband and I were on a trip in Canada and we were really excited to see the ice hockey. And I found these amazing tickets, like center rink, um, a few back, a few rows back. And once I had booked them, I told my husband about it, that I was really excited. And then he looked up the team and it turns out it was just the junior league. <laughs> oh, Jackie, you, were, you just booked to see the kids. <laughs> Twelve-year-old boys skating around. Uh, Michael in Sydney, you bungled the booking, mate. We did. Funnily enough, we were also going to Canada. My wife and I booked a trip uh, and my grandmother and uncle also booked the trip. We were supposed to go for a fairly important um, trip over to Canada. We picked the right day, but they picked the wrong month. Oh, oh. like how, was it like a June, July type thing? Like, was it kind of excusable? Or yeah, no, correct. It's exactly what it was. It yeah. was in July. We, we picked for June, and they picked for July. But it was actually supposed to be for June. And when did you realise? Uh, when we were at the at the at the uh, booking counter, um, trying to board the plane. Oh. <laughs> so you basically just rocked up a month early. That's yeah, great. Like, so like, yeah, you can hang in the food court if you want, but I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do for 30 business days. Uh, Nella, you also bungled the booking. Yes, I did. We were in Japan in last September during the um, sumo tournament, a family of five, and we're really excited. We thought we'd go to... Um, to see a sumo match and we went online and we thought, oh, they're pretty cheap, 30 yen or whatever it was. And so we got five tickets and then we realised I'm Mr. Zero and instead of about $300, it cost $3,000. Oh, man. <laughs> and so they must have been good seats, though. 
No, well, I think so, but we tried to then cancel because we thought, oh, my God, just too much, way over budget. So um, then they charged us, like, a massive, like, half of the fee or something. Uh, so we ended up cancelling it, but we ended up losing half of the Oh, man, that's oh, uh, You should have just committed and gone Yeah, to Yeah, I mean, for 3000 bucks though, you want to be sitting on the sumo rest of the shoulders, basically. <laughs> It's Billie Eilish lunch with her brand new song on Nova. And look, Billie, you know, that's a great release. And, you, you know, i got to hand it to you. It's a pretty catchy song. It is. Uh, but it is unfortunate that it isn't the best release of the last week. Uh, and you were beaten by some children from Cork in Ireland. <laughs> Have you heard this, Belle? No. Oh, man. Is this is wild. So it's, this is breaking the internet at the moment. So there's these... There's these kids. They're aged 9 to 12, and they have made this drum and bass song, which I've got to say, it feels like one of the best songs we're going to get this year. Oh, my God. Like, it, I think they did it as like a bit of like a community thing. So they had like a, you know, there was like an adult making the beat. It's not like an eight-year-old making the beat. Was it a school project? Yeah, no, it was like a community thing. So oh, like a like, youth group. Yeah, like, like a, a youth yeah, group yeah, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, and you sing this bit and that. You know, they filmed it pretty well. And, like, they put it on Twitter, I think, and it just got, like, 8 million hits, like, in the first night. Oh, my gosh. And it's just been going completely bananas. And you, you'll you see why when you hear it. Have a listen to this. It's very good. Yeah. Whoa. Doesn't it? Uh, I think I watched it. Don't the kids start doing solos as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Con- yeah, here we go. And there's like there's like yeah. dozens of kids behind the main kid. They and are, and they're wearing like bucket hats. And normally, like you know, in drum and bass and rap songs, it's like you know about money and killing people and drugs and that sort of thing. But they're like, oh, you've got a spark in me in me chest, and it makes me want to dance. Oh yeah, I'll tell you all about it. Like it's like it's all like really happy, like nice. It's like G-rated. It's yeah. G-rated it's for kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of it's such a Friday bop. Do we just play the whole song? Play Can it we? out. I reckon this will be its first spin on I reckon, Nova. So, yeah, and the, and you'll hear it, and then you'll be walking around going, think you can stop what we do. I told it. It's Cabin Crew, The <laughs> Spark. Yeah. Well, are they 9 to 12? 9 to 12 year olds from Ireland. Yeah, enjoy this. Here we go on Nova. Friday night's the night we like What you doing this weekend, weekend, weekend Oh yes, it's the best night of the week Renee and Brizzy, what's on this weekend? Oh, not too much Just uh, going to see mum and hopefully spending time with the kids Because they've yeah, been sick all last week So Sounds like a riot, Renee Let's move to Adelaide Courtney, what's on this weekend? Uh, Friday night footy, so we've got the Matildas playing in Adelaide Oval tonight. We've got an AFL match, so heater on, pyjamas and chicken wings. Friday night footy in my hoodie. That's a reference from a group from the state you're in. (laughs) That's how quick we're working here. Violet in Perth, what are you doing this weekend? Um, Well, I've just got a super fun weekend planned working on assignments, unfortunately. Boring! What you doing this weekend, weekend, weekend? Back in Melbourne, what's on this weekend for you? Hey guys, I've got a child-free weekend and I am heading to a girlfriend's house for a housewarming and a Tilly's viewing as well. Yeah, it's going to be fun. A what viewing? Tilly's. Tilly's. Oh, Tilly's I, are playing. I thought you said chili viewing. And I was like, oh, I thought you were just going to watch some chilies grow back. The Tilly's, let's go. Well, let's head to Sydney to wrap things up. What do you got planned, Nev? I am working night shift in a data centre all weekend. Boring, boring. Yeah! <laughs> all right, Nev, sounds good. Wish I could be there with you. <laughs> hey, give us a buzz, 13, 24, 10. Did you have a huge fight? on a really dumb reason. 
something really small happened and it just blew up into a huge fight. Maybe someone ate your chocolate bar and then you ended up getting divorced. It was just the final straw. You know? I mean, mine's kind of close to that because I'm currently not texting my boyfriend back because he ate my croissant last night and I'm still mad about it because I had, okay, I had this croissant in the fridge. I feel fridge. like no one challenged you and you went, okay, that was <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no one pushed you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you must No need know, to get angry about it, you know. <laughs> I had a croissant in the fridge. Now we finished work Weird quite- spot to put a croissant. Well, because otherwise my cat's like, yeah, it's a whole thing. But I had to put it in the fridge. And we finished work like kind of late, like 8 p.m. And it was one of those things that I just promised my stomach. And I just, I was so excited to get home and to eat this croissant. And it was really exciting. And it was my little treat. It was my Thursday night treat. And then I get home and Christian's on the couch and I open the fridge and there's no croissant there. Mm. And I said, where's the croissant? And he's like, oh, I ate it. I'm like, why did you eat it? He's like, oh, I was hungry. I can't get that back. I can't get the cross <laughs> yeah. back. It's gone. Well, you can, and I mean, I'm yeah. so mad. Yeah, no, I like, you know, I suppose it's in the fridge and he, he did, you know, benefit of the doubt. Yeah, it's but I was like, why of... didn't you just wait for me to come home? Because he was hungry. But that's what he said. He was like, well, I was hungry. And I was like. This is probably his yeah, thought process. He's hungry. He's opened the fridge and goes, weird place to put a croissant. Oh, I'll have that. That's <laughs> that's all that happened there. I'm so, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, ma- I'm, I'm still mad. I can tell. <laughs> 13, 24, 10. Did you have a huge fight over something really, really small? Melissa in Sydney, what happened? Oh, hey, guys. Um, yeah, I um, didn't talk to my boyfriend for a whole week because I posted a picture of myself on Insta and he didn't like it. And he's supposed to like all of my pictures. So, yeah. 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 I have the same thing with um, Ben and Belle, Melissa. Uh, but they've, <laughs> they're coming nigh, nigh on a year without liking one of my things. But... I don't like stuff on Instagram. Yeah, well, I you don't should like either. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no, Especially no, my I bikini pics, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, see, if you did post that, I'd like it. You know, impressions are not my thing. <laughs> Melissa, thank you very much. Uh, Mitch joins us now in Melbourne. Big fight, dumb reason. What happened? Uh, well, when me and my, I'm a twin, when we were about 15, he had this huge crush on this girl and she kissed my cheek after school one day and someone took a photo and sent it to him. <laughs> And as you could imagine, you know, we were fighting all afternoon, punching on all after school, yeah. all the way home from the bus stop. Uh-huh. He was so angry at me. And I was like, dude, it wasn't even my fault. Yeah. Well, did, what? You could have just said, oh, she thought I was you. Oh, ha, ha, ha. No, we're not identical. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It, it wouldn't have worked. worked, Mitch. It wouldn't have worked. It would have been a good try. I had one recently with my wife, Sam. Um, I was trying to get some brownie points. And so I said, you know what? You stay home, have a break. I'll take our little son, Freddie, to his swimming lesson. And so I did normally go together. I went by myself. I got home. She said, how did it go? I said that was harder than childbirth. (gasps) She didn't think it was very funny. I thought it was quite funny. I think that's hilarious. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Because I I, I took my son to a swimming lesson and normally go together, but she wasn't there. So I I had to put the pram in the back and I had to go in the water and I had to dry him off and change him. It's really hard. And what is the mattress like in the shed? Is it getting <laughs> is it getting waterlogged in there? Like I could imagine it's sort of <laughs> bit hard coming into winter. Oh, it's a little bit funny. It's not. It is. Because I imagine that's also not the first time you've probably said that because you've said it here as a joke before. One of you has. Annalise in Penrith, uh, good evening. You had a huge fight over something really small. Hi, guys. How are you? Good. Good. So my partner and I have been together for four years and... One morning, um, at that time of the month, and I was like, oh, I'm going to order Uber Eats. Do you want anything? I was like, oh, no, I don't want anything from that place. And then he ordered it without me, and I got really angry that he, <laughs> he actually ordered it without me. I was like, as if you didn't ask to check before <laughs> ordering it. Like, that was half an hour ago. How could you do this? You're so inconsiderate. Mm. And, yeah, so that's the only fight we've ever had. Well, that's, that's good. Wow. That's good, wow. though. You know, that's good odds for oh, four years. But totally valid, Annalise. The um, do you want anything, no, I don't, you're supposed to know that that means yes. Absolutely. Well, you're losing half of it anyway, even when you do order it. Well, because you didn't, you didn't actually order the other person something. No, it's, you anyway. still get the girlfriend tax is brutal. Yeah. Uh, Ashley joins us now. You had a big fight over something dumb. Yeah, I had a big fight with my brother over getting the clothes off the line. All oh, right. How how big was this fight like? So we ended up 
yelling back and forth. And in that argument, I stood on my bed to yell at him. And he grabbed my leg by the end of it and like flipped me off the bed and be like, get off, get off your ass and go get some clothes off the line. Yeah. Okay. So he, so he won that? He did win. Yeah, he won He that, did win yeah. the argument in the end. <laughs> Well, look, to make it a little bit better for you, Ashley, um, i got some movie tickets. Do you want to go see The Watchers or are you going to see Abigail for the horror? Ooh, Abigail. Abigail. Yeah. All right, in cinemas now. They're all yours. Well, thank you. No worries, Ash. We're fresh out of Garfield, so it's not your lucky night, unfortunately. <laughs> but, hey, there's always next week. You know what, Ashley? Are you having a good Friday night so far? How's it going? Yeah, it's going pretty well. Getting mm-hmm. home from work at the moment. Oh, well, look, if you're looking for a bit of a pick-me-up, just press that button in front of you. Can you see that big button? No. You can't see it. It's just it's a big red one. It's just right in front of you. Press that big red button. Ooh. You see it? I can't see can't. it. It's no, just there's a big... Uh, oh, wait. Yeah, you see it? You got it? Yep. Yeah, big it. red button. There you go. You. Good stuff. This <laughs> is Tommy. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> also, can I just say, I'm about to play this song, and I will play this song. She hung up when yeah. she said she found it, because I think she thought I was telling her to hang up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she so hang on. So you so you were doing a bit like yeah, press the big Tommy Richmond button yeah, in like front the, of you because this is a real. You know, but this you, real she thought bot. you were just mad dogging her, as in see that big red button on your phone, loser. Press it. How about you press that? That'll about- get your Friday night going. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean for you no, to hang he was, up. He was doing like a fun. I was thing, doing a yeah. bit where it's like it's a good song. Yeah. And <laughs> She's never calling all this. I wasn't again. being nasty. <laughs> Scada. Hello, my friend. <laughs> Sorry, just waiting for the mic to turn on. It is that time of the week. We're about to get a mix and a little taste of what's to come later on this evening. Um, you, you were doing a gig in, in Sydney. I did. I was there for Vivid Sydney last night uh, with Fitz and Whipper and Kate Ritchie yeah, for their yeah. singles party. It was at Taronga Zoo. It, there's a uh, like a function centre there. You could see the opera house there. You could see the bridge. It was all lit up because it's vivid. Whoa. Uh, it was That's so cool. cool. We did get a noise complaint, though. Oh, no. Um, we had to turn it down a bit because the chinchillas were getting a bit restless. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> In well, Taronga Zoo there. guess what? The chinchillas can stick it tonight because <laughs> DJ Scudder is in the house and we ain't turning down for nobody. Yeah, I really hope there's no animals listening to this one. So you were there for Vivid, yeah? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, look, I, I almost I almost wanted to go to Vivid this weekend because none other than Underworld are playing. Mega white thing, mega, mega white thing, mega, mega, wow. Lager, 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 mega, mega. At the Opera House, not once, not twice. Three nights. Whoa. Yeah. One for the train spotting fans in the house. If yes. you are going to that, I am so jealous, but also have the best time. I reckon uh, that's actually their second best song. What's the first best? Underneath the Radar. Oh, we yeah. kiss oh. underneath the radar. What is that? This is how it starts and then Sang it's the on. chorus. So you, you were going to go to <laughs> Underworld, but you don't even know. Hey, I don't have one song. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, it is. Oh. All right, look, that's enough of us picking songs. <laughs> Let's throw it over to DJ Scudder from Nova Nation. DJ Scudder from Nova Nation <laughs> in the mix, uh, turning it on. I'm hearing by all reports that everyone is loving that mix, especially producer Tina's mum, Marie. Mm-hmm. She said that was sounding amazing, Scudder. Yeah, she's got the glow sticks out in the kitchen, I hope. Uh, wonderful. I would be looking out if I was a Gold Coast meter maid because Liam Stapleton is coming for you this weekend and he's going to get himself a photo. <laughs> I'm glad you finished that sentence. Yeah, 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 maybe a photo. Yeah, just for the album. Ben Liam and Bell's Complaints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll take that on board. Yep, thank you. Yeah, no, I I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yep, no, thanks for the feedback. Thank you. Bye. Hotline. 
yeah, it's a space where you can call 132410. If there's anything you don't like about the show, we'll take it on board, of course. Sarah in Brisbane, you've got a complaint. I do. So I listened to your uh, Gen Z cool or not cool segment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it turns out I'm really not that cool in the slightest, and that sucks. Yeah, okay. So obviously, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm sure you're sort of in the similar boat to us. Like, you know, we think Harry Potter's cool. The Gen it Z was cool. saying, yeah, well, mm-hmm. no, Gen Z saying no. She likes Hunger Games, which is, you know, laughable, mm. to be completely honest. But. Sarah, what are you doing tonight? What's your plans tonight? I'm in bed on Snapchat looking yeah. at my streak, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good reference to the streak there, Sarah. Thank you very much. Alicia joins us now in Sydney. What's your complaint? Hi, guys. Um, So I actually didn't like um the way you guys didn't like ScoMo's audiobook. Mm-hmm. I read it and I thought it was pretty good. You liked ScoMo's book. Yep. Okay. Big, big fan of politics yourself there, Alicia? Definitely so. Yep. And would you say ScoMo's your favourite Prime Minister? Probably. Probably. He's, he's definitely up there. Wow. Well, now you know I'm going to ask you who your favourite is then. If you had to do your top three. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one. <laughs> 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 I reckon you're just a diehard yeah. ScoMo fan. Yeah, diehard ScoMo fan. Or can't name another two <laughs> prime ministers. <laughs> uh, no, thank you for your call. Ashley in Adelaide, you've got a complaint? Yes, I have a complaint for you, Liam. Okay. I have been following you on Instagram and I think I love your videos. Okay, you're so you. cool. And then um, I found out you're a bit of a bedwetter. <laughs> yeah, so, and that was, I can assure you that was three years ago. <laughs> so it's, it's my bed wedding days are well behind me. Yeah, if you didn't know, Liam did share a story this week about how uh, when he was growing up, when he yeah. was a teenager, his parents bought him. No, I wasn't a teenager. I think you said teenager. No. It, and I heard par- early 20s. But, you know. <laughs> your parents bought brought you this underwear that had an alarm in it that detected moisture <laughs> and you're also a heavy sleeper and so you had to sleep next to their bed so that yeah. the alarm would go off and they would wake you up if you were bedwetting. Yeah, so all that would happen is that I would completely piss myself, the mm-hmm. alarm would go off, wake up my parents and then they'd wake me up and go, <laughs> you might want to have a shower and we will get this cleaned up. But you know what? Now you do really cool impressions on Instagram. So <laughs> Thank you. you really you. Well, you know, it's you know, it's like, you know how like yeah, I think it's like serial killers, supposedly a lot of them bedwetters. Were they? Uh, yeah, apparently. And um, I didn't hurt animals or anything, but so I went the other route. I just, I do Borat impressions on TikTok. <laughs> so I think, and you know, it's the, it's the safer route, I think. Ashley, thanks for your complaint. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.